Bonderized steel has become popular because you get the look of a zinc product at a fraction of the cost, but there are some problems that you need to be aware of. So in this video, we're gonna go over the top six problems and the solutions to those problems. I'm Paul Rubio and welcome to the Metal Roofing Learning Channel. This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, where you can find a variety of colors and finishes, all while saving by buying Factory Direct. Problem number one, no warranty. When you're using Bonderize, you're not using it for its intended purpose, which is to be painted. Instead, you're using it for an unintended purpose, which is because you like the way it looks. So for this reason, manufacturers will not offer a paint warranty. Another important consideration with Bonderized is the substrate beneath it, um, which will normally be galvanized, but it's the amount of galvanizing that's important. At Western States Metal Roofing, we use a G90 galvanized finish. That's going to be the most amount of galvanized that you see on a Bonderized product. Most other companies will use a G60 or possibly even a G40 finish. Uh, the reason this is important is because the bonderized coating itself offers almost no protection against the weather. So what you're relying upon is the galvanized coating beneath it. The lesser the amount of galvanized, the lesser the lifespan of your roof. So this is why we always recommend, number one, to use a G90, and number two, to ask your manufacturer if they are providing a G90, G60, or G40 substrate. So if the lack of warranty becomes an issue, there's actually some really good solutions. And that solution is to use a Kynar painted product that will actually look like Bonderize. Um, at Western States Metal Roofing, we have three products I would recommend. Uh, a matte musket gray, or a color called matte patina, both of which about the same price that, that Bonderize does, or a product called Vintage that was actually designed to look like Bonderized. If you feel this is a better solution, uh, simply Look in the description below and uh, request a free sample. Problem number two, inconsistency. This is the biggest problem we see with Bonderized, is that when you go from one batch of steel to the next and you install it on a roof, they're gonna look different enough that it presents a problem. Now the good news is there's a good solution to this. What you need to do is you need to work with a manufacturer that's familiar with Bonderized and you need to insist that if the job is small enough, and that's usually 70 to maybe 100 squares, that all of the material, including the flat sheets, are made from the same coil. If your job is larger than one coil can, can handle, then you need to insist at a minimum that the material is made from the same batch. Problem number three, white rust. There's really no rhyme or reason why white rust will occur with Bonderized. The best you can do as a contractor is to warn the end user. That if they're uncomfortable with this possibility, the best bet is to steer them towards a painted product like we talked about previously. Problem number four, Bonderized scratches easily. Bonderize is not a finished coating. It's a coating that was designed to have paint applied to it. What happens is it scratches extremely easily from removing it from the bundle and installing it on the roof. The other issue you have with scratching is during the manufacturing process. When you take it from a steel coil and run it into a corrugated panel or a standing seam panel, the process of it going through the rollers of the machine will put a lot of small scratches along the panel. The only solution for, bond, for, for the scratching issue is twofold. One, handle it carefully when you're on the job site. Don't slide it across anything. Very careful handling. The other solution is to use a manufacturer that specializes in bonderized. At Western States Metal Roofing, what we actually do is we put a strippable plastic on the coil prior to it going through the roll former. After the material is completed, we actually remove the plastic because it's a, it's a very time consuming process to remove the plastic on every sheet on the job site. So when you get the product, I'm not going to say that it's completely scratch free. I think that's impossible with the Bonderize. What I will say is that you will end up with a product with significantly less scratching than you would have if you were to buy it from a manufacturer that did not use a strippable product when they manufactured it. Problem number five, wet stacking. 
Bonderize does not do well with wet stacking. What wet stacking means is when you have a bundle, uh, let's say of corrugated, for example, where you have 30 sheets in a bundle and everything's compressed very tightly. If you were to leave that material exposed to the weather on the job site and it rains, for example, or even possibly you live in an area where it's wet in the morning and it's dry in the evening, if that moisture sits in that tightly compressed bundle and remains there, what will happen with bonderized is you'll develop white rust, even more white rust than if you were to install it where it started clean and develop white rust down the road. You'll, if it gets wet, you're gonna immediately start out with a ton of white rust. You're gonna have a customer that's angry and it's just the nature of the product. The only possible way to get around it is you need to take extreme care in how you handle the, in how you store the product. Um, have it arrive on the job site when you're ready to install it. Don't have it sit there for longer than it needs to be. Store it in a dry place. Possibly tarp it. If you tarp it though, you need to be careful about the humidity. If you cannot do that, you should not use bonderized steel. Problem number six the correct engineering values, wind uplift, and load tables. Most manufacturers have wind uplift, engineering values, load charts, etc., in which the steel that they're using, for example, if you're using 24 gauge, in most instances you're using a 24 gauge in a grade 50 steel. The problem with bonderized is when you buy bonderized from a service center, quite often it's not a grade 50, it's a commercial grade steel. Now this might not seem like a big deal, but if you're installing a job in which all of your painted products, all of your galvanized products, everything's designed for a grade 50 steel, and now you're supplying a commercial quality steel, your engineering values are no longer valid. You're using a product that it's not designed for. Now, if you're simply installing a bonderized on a roof with a solid substrate, it's probably gonna have minimal effect. Siding product, probably not gonna have much of an effect. Where you would definitely run into a problem is if you had a bonderized job where it has to span from support to support. You're telling the client that the material will carry one load, but you're supplying a product that does not in fact, carry that same load. So you could find yourself in problems and if that job was to fail, technically you could be responsible. The only solution to this is to buy from a manufacturer that uses a grade 50 bonderized steel. That way the load charts that they use for all of their other products are the same for bonderized. I hope this video has helped you and if there's two takeaways I can give you, it's that number one, Educate your end user of the potential problems that they might encounter with Bonderize. And the second thing I'd really recommend is that if you're gonna buy Bonderize, buy from a company that specializes in Bonderize. Don't buy from a company that occasionally sells Bonderize. You can find step-by-step -step installation videos and homeowner guides on our channel. And don't forget to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribe. Want to learn more about Bonderize? or the painted alternative vintage? Check out these videos.